Hello everyone and welcome back to the World War History Park. Hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we will be starting our multi-part uh, series about the rise of the fascist leaders in, in Europe and along with in Japan. And we're going to be starting off with Benito Mussolini, the fascist leader of Italy, also known as Il Duce. You could also say Benito Swagolini, master of fascist drip, but we're not going to talk about that right here. <laughs> I just heard it. I literally just heard it. I heard the whole thing in my trailer. And I've got to say, in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit that I have ever heard. Alrighty, so if you guys end up enjoying the video, drop a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, you know where to put it down in the comment section below. We also have an Instagram now. If you want to put it down in the comments below, you can see it. Go follow or we'll post stuff every here and there. Events, fun stuff, you know. So if you want to you know, see that, then you can definitely do that. So with that said, let's get into the video. So I'm going to start out here. I figured, well... He always speaks first, so why not give me a shot, right? So, Benito Mussolini was born on July 29th, 1883, um, in the town of, um, what is it, Dorovia? Dovia, Dovia di Predapio, in Dovia the province of Forlia, Romagna, Italy. All right. Mouthful. I never get that right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know Italian, hard. I'm it's, sorry. It's definitely not. <laughs> um, he was born to uh, his father Alessandro who was a blacksmith and he was also a socialist and then his mother Rosa was a Catholic um, high school teacher basically um, and as a young boy he helped his father with his blacksmithing and he spent a lot of time with him and he began um, agreeing with his father on you know all the socialism and stuff he was sent to a boarding school um, I, it says monks I don't really remember because I don't know enough about him but um, he, by he, he, monks, but. he would um, clash with his classmates teachers and over his you know beliefs in socialism and all that and um, he actually injured somebody with a pen knife and was expelled um, he then joined another school that was non-religious and then he achieved the good grades you know he finished his education right and I know basically his beginnings in inner education and next he would start his very 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 interesting history and in moving around he would in 1902 he would actually immigrate to switzerland to avoid military conscription in the italian army and while in switzerland he would briefly be a stonemason in geneva freiburg and Bern without finding any permanent job and while in Switzerland, Mussolini would be influenced by the ideas of many people such as uh, Friedrich uh, Nietzsche and socialist Charles uh, Pocuoi, to um, give some examples. Um, and he really became active in the Italian socialist movement while he was in Switzerland and be began working for the paper uh, L'Avenire del Laboratore, Laboratore aka the workers future uh, organizing meetings giving speeches and and serving as a secretary for the italian workers union in lausanne uh, but his stay would be short-lived as he would be arrested as one of many arrests in switzerland for um his advocacy of a general strike he spent two weeks in jail and would be deported back to italy but he would then return to switzerland upon being released and would immediately be arrested for falsifying his papers he would then be sent back to it would be sent back to italy but he would come back to switzerland and he would begin his studies at the university of lausanne's uh, department of social science while and while he was there that's where he would get introduced to the ideas of vladimir lenin the famous uh communist who would then you know go to russia and you know do all that stuff so and in sorry didn't and in december 1904 Mussolini returned to italy and to take advantage of an amnesty, an amnesty for desertion for military, basically he could, you know, come back, do his service in the military, and wouldn't have to serve any other types of um, any other types of uh, um, punishments. And he would join a corps of the Burz uh, Glieri, um in Forli, which was his hometown, on the 30th of December. He would serve for two years before returning uh, to school. 
So, believe this or not, he would leave Italy for the third time. It's like he hated it or something, but I don't know. Um, he, um, <clears throat> sorry, pardon me. So, <laughs> he, um, took a job as a secretary at the Labour Party of the Italian-speaking city of Trento? Is it Trento? Yeah, yeah it's Trento. Trento and Austria-Hungary. Obviously, now it's in Italy. Apparently, I don't know mapping very well. Um, he would also um, do office work for the local socialist party and edited its newspaper. What is it? L'Avenire del Lav Lavoratore, ah, or right, the Workers' right. Future. And then he came back in 1910 because he got bored of Austria Hungary, apparently. And um, he spent a time, a little bit of time in Milan before moving back to his hometown where he edited I'm assuming another weekly newspaper and I, right and then four years later um, he was still in the Socialist Party and he got caught up in the big nationalism because World War One was just starting and he was like oh well Italian nationalism that's just great mm -hmm. and um, he um, they, they got caught between pro-war and anti-war um, agreements and he went no 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 never mind forgive my phrasing um the socialists uh went on the more anti-war type sentiment and then Mus Mussolini was like disagreeing with it he was kind of getting pissed off about it so he um began attacking the anti-war anti socialists and he was expelled from that party as a result so basically disagreement got pissed off he said, fuck this shit, and I'm out of here. Well, he was actually forced out of the party. But well, he still said, fuck this shit, yeah. so. <laughs> well, after his expulsion from the party, he would actually start to, it would be the, he would start the beginnings of what would be called the fascist party, or as he had called it, um, the, uh, the fascio, the fascio revolucionario d'azione internazionale, or the revolutionary bundle of international action. But while he was, another thing he did was he actually formed an interventionist newspaper called Li Popolo d'Italia, with the people of Italy, which he would have, which he would organize all the way up until he was put into power. And so he would form his party, the fascist party, in 1914, and they would have a very intervention interventionist uh, view toward the war. And so when the war started and Italy joined the Allies. Him and a lot of, uh, like many Italian nationalists, volunteered to fight. But he was actually turned down when he first joined in because they didn't think he would actually be able to do it. So he waited, and, and on August 31st, he was actually he actually was brought up, ported to his uh, original unit um, of, Ver, of Versaglieri, and he took part in the second and third battles of Isonzo. But then he was also report, and during this time, he was actually. Um, promoted to the rank of corporal for his merit in war, he was able his uh, amazing leadership and his poise during times of great stress, and that was actually a quote from his um, his commanding officer at the time. But his service would end abruptly when, in February of 1917, he was hit by an accidental ex uh, mortar explosion from one of his mortar squads that landed in his trenches, and he was left with 40 shards of metal in his body. Could you imagine? 40 shards of metal in your body. I mean, imagine the initial pain and then having to live with that shit. Yeah. That would be, yeah. and, and it's like, if you're if you're in constant pain, dude, it's gonna drive you nuts. Like, no one wants 40 shards of metal in their body, and especially for that fucking long. It's gonna be immensely painful, not only on physically, but mentally. Yeah. Like, that must have sucked. Mm -hmm. He was then taken off the lines and put into a hospital behind the lines and from there he would be discharged in August of 1917 and he would resume his position as editor-in-chief um, at his own newspaper and he, he, Mussolini would develop his fascist ideas when he began to really try to make fascism a thing and he, he got his, all his ideas were based on influences from people such as Plato, uh, George Sorel, and uh, Nietzsche from back when he was in Switzerland. 
and also the economic ideal ideas of Vilfredo uh, Pareto. Um, and he would write about these fascist ideas in his newspapers and he would you know, do speeches and stuff. And in doing so, he actually gained a very sizable um, following because a lot of his ideas were actually agreed on by a lot of people in Italy at the time. And, and then this would result in the most famous piece of history in, the, in his rise to power, the March on Rome. On the 27th of October 1922, in fascist black shirts, around 30,000 of them, gathered in Rome and marched on the main parliamentary building, demanding the resignation of the liberal prime minister of the time, Luigi uh, uh, Facta, and appointed and wanted a to appoint a new fascist government. And on October 28th, after refusing the government's uh, request for for to declare martial law. Um, the current monarch actually handed Mussolini the power. But what's interesting is if you look at any footage or anything, Mussolini was actually not there. He was actually in Milan in his headquarters writing and doing all his own things during this. And he didn't even, he didn't even go to Rome when they you know, started negotiating with him for a new government. He was at home during this entire thing. But he would eventually be given the power. And from there on... Uh, it's history. He would I mean, it's add also, more laws and turn it into a dictatorship. It's and for a time, he was actually liked until he started to, you know, go with the ideas about Adolf Hitler and all that stuff. And the and for the and before we forget, it's important to note what fascism kind of is. Um, fascism is essentially a belief in. It's almost like, uh, if you've ever heard of totalitarianism, it's a form of one-party government that exercises control and um, uses uh, certain other um, works and it's many other things to kind of justify their excuse. So it's essentially control over the people and essentially no freedom. And it's the belief in that that's what's called fascism. Just a small uh, basic text definition for what that is, because we forgot to mention it. So here it is at the end of the video. <laughs> but that is Benito Mussolini's childhood and his whole journey into fascism and to his rise to power. If you guys enjoyed the video, then of course drop a like and subscribe. If you have any history, any history questions, any type of video ideas you think would be cool definitely drop them in the comment section below and also our Instagram and we do have a TikTok we haven't put anything on there yet but all that stuff will be down in the description below and spread the freaking word <laughs> spread the words we have many amazing ideas and things coming up in the future that we cannot wait to share with you guys so with that said hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you back here at the World War History Bar next time peace